So hi everyone and welcome to part uh, three of uh, the video series on univariate forecasting in R. So in this video, we're going to do the uh, beginning of our in-sample forecasting and validation. So uh, in the last uh, two videos, we loaded up our series, we graphed it and we decomposed it. And in the last video, we determined uh, uh, that the data that we had initially was non-stationary. So now we're going to start to build up our forecasting models. So the first step that we want is we want to perform in-sample forecasting. Okay, so in-sample forecasting. And essentially, we're going to use that to test uh, our models before we start to forecast out of sample. So uh, it's important that we know that our model is adequate enough to be able to forecast longer into the future. So our first step is we're going to split the sample okay, into uh, training and test sets. So we're going to have a part of the sample uh, that we're going to take out momentarily so that we can forecast that part that we took out, which we already know, we know those values, to see which one of our models is able to model the part that we took out best. And we know that if they're able to model that best, then arguably uh, or theoretically, they would be the most adept model for that. So the command to split uh, the time series is um, TS split. So I'll create an object called split uh, underscore uh, inflation, which is um, uh, my inflation variable. And uh, I'm going to use the TS split command. Okay. And uh, this will be on inflation, which is my time series object. And I want, okay, I want my validation set to have 12 periods. Okay. So notice uh, sam sample equals 12. Notice that I'm dealing with monthly data here. So I want to have a year, so 12 months, as my validation set. And if I do that, I get that there. Okay, so I get that. Okay, so uh, split int, and that's going to be there. List of two. So that list of two is our training and our testing data set. So let's define those. So I'll name an object training. Training. And that's essentially uh, split underscore in. Okay, and we're going to get the training part of that data set. And for testing, that's our validation set. Same procedure, split, uh, split underscore in. And we're going to get the test, okay, the test this time around. Okay, so just to verify, let's look at the length, okay, of our training data set. Training. So the length of our training is 232. So we have 232 periods uh, of training. Then we have, let's see, a uh, length of our testing. So this should be 12 because we specified sample.out to be 12. So this should be 12. And yes, it is 12. So uh, first thing we'll do is we'll use an ARIMA diagnostic plot on the training on the training set, on the training set, so that we can determine or have a little bit of an idea on what lags to use. So we don't know exactly what the lag order is, right? Like uh, we, we don't have a way to perfectly identify that, but we can take a guess and we'll use the diagnostic plot for that. So the command to produce that is arima underscore diag, okay, training. So we want to produce the diagnostics on the training set. And we have this one. So notice um, this is our training set. It graphed it. So it's very interactive. And we see that the ACF is dramatically declining, um, signal of um, uh, an AR process. And we know the PACF has lag significant until 2 mainly. And this is the first difference. So let's zero in on the PACF and the ACF. So as we said, since the ACF is declining, it's most probably an AR process. And we see the immediate cutoffs in the PACF. So Notice the first two lags here are significant. So I can kind of uh, I can kind of theorize that hmm, I think the number of lags to include in my model, the number of autoregressive lags to include is two. Okay, so I'll take a guess first. So I'll take a guess. Okay, so I guess uh, two AR lags, and I know okay I know that the data is non-stationary, so I need to difference it once. So one difference. And I'll take a guess of one MA lag. So that brings me with um, an ARIMA okay, model of 
degree of order 211. So let's build that model first. So that's ARIMA 211. Okay. Uh, the command to build a model is ARIMA. Okay. And I want to build an, a model around our training data set. And the order of that will be um, 211. Okay. So we have two autoregressive lags. That's the first one. Uh, one difference, that's the second, and then the third is the moving average lag, and then I can do that. And you'll notice that it created an object called ARIMA211, which contains my observations. If I type ARIMA211, it will display uh, the results and the coefficients. So that we, we're not going to interpret that. Well, we need to interpret uh, model quality. So we use autoplot, okay? Autoplot uh, ARIMA211, and this will give us some diagnostics. Okay, so uh, what you're seeing here is the unit circle that indicates the inverse AR roots. Now, for the model to be stable or for us to ensure that it has no unit roots, everything, all of these dots that you see here, should be inside the circle. So, this particular model, this ARIMA211, passes that test since all inverse AR roots and inverse MA roots are inside this circle. So another thing to test for would be the residuals, and we can do that by using the check residuals command. So check underscore res ARIMA211, and let's enter that. Oh, whoops. And then let's uh, control enter. And we would get this. Note... Um, there is still one, okay, notice that red dot here, it's, uh, if I hover over it, okay, it will show uh, something called a seasonal lag. So there's this one lag at the 12th period that is uh, significant, which suggests to me that there's probably some seasonality in the model. There's probably some seasonality there. So I want to incorporate that in at least one model that I try. So um, now let's build another model and let's see a Sarima one. So given that we saw that there's probably some seasonal uh, lag, let's add a seasonal lag. So uh, I'll use the same specification. So that's 211, but I'll add one seasonal autoregress of lag. So Arima, okay. So on training, okay, the order of it is going to be 211. Then I have to add another option called seasonal. Okay, so seasonal. This will tell our, okay, you want to include seasonal lags. Okay, list. Okay, and then order is equal to C100. Okay, and this will build my Sarima model. Okay, my Sarima model. So note it's there in the environment tab. Then I want to do the same diagnostic testing. So I want to plot the inverse MA and the AR root. So auto plot, auto plot, uh, Sarima 2111. Okay, and I get this. So are all, yes. So notice if it's all red, then all of it is within. So all the lags are within. So the model is stable. There are no unit roots. Then let's check the residuals. Res, Sarima. 2111 okay and we have here uh so notice there okay so we have um a pretty improved model because the the lag isn't as significant as it was before so before it uh, stem until here now it's just there and it's on the 24th period and it's also a seasonal lag which suggests that there could be still some seasonality that we weren't able to account for now I'm gonna discuss now a function which I think will simplify all our work, which is we're they're gonna try it, we're gonna try to get the guesswork out of determining which model is right, and we'll just let R decide for us. So uh, there's a function in R called auto arima. So let's do that. So let's name this object auto, and then we'll use another mod, another command auto dot arima, which will uh, essentially leave the decision up to the software based on the indicators that it has, and let's see if that's the most optimal model to choose so arima auto dot arima on training okay and we want seasonal equals true now this option here it just tells r that you're allowing for seasonal lags to be part of the optimal model if you set this to false uh, uh the auto arima command wouldn't scan seasonal models so in this case i want to include seasonal models in my scanning so i say that 
and it should run okay so notice it's taking some time and boom it went up with the um it found a nice model and let's see so let's type auto to see what model it produced so according to r based on the auto arima command the best model it thinks okay the best model it thinks is an arima 210201 so we were almost correct with our specification or our guess of two um, two one one. Okay, so it's two auto aggressive lags, one difference, but it thinks that there are no moving average lags, but it thinks that there are two seasonal auto regressive lags and one seasonal moving average lag. So let's see how that finds out. So auto plot. Okay, auto plot um, plot auto auto plot auto and let's see if all so here all reset all roots are inside the unit circle so this model passes that test then let's check now for the residual so check underscore rest of auto so check underscore rest of auto and we get this one so now okay there are still some significant lags but um, not so much okay so we have these three models okay so we have those three models let's try and forecast using these three models and let's see which one is uh which one's the best so forecast uh va values and diagnostics and i think you'll find this part quite cool so let's use the first model first and let's name our forecast fcast1 okay and the command to forecast is well forecast and we're gonna use the first model that we have that's arima211 and we want to forecast 12 periods ahead because that's the size of our training data of our testing data set so that will generate a forecast object then let's test the forecast test forecast okay and then the actual data we'll be getting from is inf okay and the forecast uh forecast object is gonna be equal to fcast uh, one that's the object we just created then our test data set will be testing, which is, if you recall, that's the name of the data set we use for testing. So that's this one here, right? And if we run this command, okay, we should get a very nice graph. Now look, we have actual versus forecasted and fitted, um, and it's an interactive graph. So you can see all the forecast diagnostics at each point. Now, if you wanna zero in on a certain time period, just crop in like that. So let's crop in further. And we note that uh, that blue line there is the actual value and the green line is what the forecast predicts. So notice that uh, it was able to get some correctly, but uh, some, like for example, this point is spot on, but then it wasn't able to get this downward thing here and it just kind of went along. So we don't think it's that good a model. And let's, we can see that it's not that good of a model if you use the accuracy command. So accuracy of fcast1 and our testing data set so we want to compare and we notice that uh these forecast indicators generally indicate a uh, not so good forecast so we have a high feels u and then a high uh, rmse a high mean error and uh not generally good so let's try an, our other forecast okay so let me copy this so you don't have to retype let's forecast now using our second model which is sarima Sarima 2111, right? And we're just, this is gonna be FCAS2. And then this is FCAS2. So let's now use, okay, our Sarima model, okay? And the Sarima model will be here. So notice, okay, I can tell immediately the forecast improved. So the first forecast that we had wasn't able to, you know, kind of model this downward trajectory, but this model was able to model it quite perfectly. Uh, quite well not perfect though because it, it didn't go down all the way but uh, at least it was able to see that and let's see if it's more accurate so notice it has lower uh, indicators across the board suggesting that it's a much better model than our first one so incorporating seasonality was key in getting a better model then lastly let's just forecast using the model that we think is the best uh, that our thought was the best so let's name that fcast a and this is gonna be auto then this is gonna be f cast a then this is f cast a so let's 
enter that and I can tell you that I think that this will be the best forecast of all. So notice, let's zero in and it got that almost perfectly. So notice this is the actual, then this is the uh, the result of the forecast. It was able to go even further down to that point and forecast above. So I think this is going to be the best model in accuracy too. Yeah. So notice all indicators are much lower than the second one and certainly lower than the first one. So that's how we forecast and evaluate uh, forecasts in R. And in the next video, we're going to try to put all of this in one graph and forecast out of sample. So thank you for watching.